Growing up, I had been bullied in school, and I felt like an outsider. I felt like an outcast. I had no friends. I was alone. To me, it was very, very sad because of her issues with her dad. She dealt a lot with her dad, and the times where he was brought up wasn't ever good. Like... B would tell them he had cancer when he didn't. Or he would tell them he's dying tomorrow when he wasn't. Growing up, I was always really protective of Demi. I remember my dad was such a loving person, but when he started drinking, he was very different. Scary things began to happen. He would rage and yell and throw things. And Demi saw that. I was depressed at a very, very young age. Fascinated with death. Wondering what it would be like to have a funeral. I never knew why I would think so darkly. And it took me a long time to figure out what was actually going on. My dad was an addict and an alcoholic. And I guess I always searched for what he found in drugs and alcohol. My first time doing coke, I was 17, working on Disney Channel. And I was with a couple friends, and they introduced me to it. Demi had real anger issues. Difficult, harder to be around. Demi's pulling anyone that she could like manipulate and change. She was depressed. She would sleep all the time. I think she just it became obvious that she was struggling with herself. You hear about interventions or families laying ultimatums and saying like you either change or you're out. Change has to happen now. The most important thing to Demi is losing people. It's losing people that she cares about and that loves her. That's the most important thing to Demi. I had developed a plan where I got everybody on the team, business manager, attorneys, agents, everybody, to say, if Phil walks, we walk. This was the showdown of all showdowns. It wasn't a matter of if they were going to leave. It was, we are leaving. We, there's no more that we can do for you. I remember her crying. Going, what the fuck do I need to do? What do I need to do? And Mike said, give us your cell phone. And I think he said, like now. And she picked up the, the plate. And she literally is grabbing this thing, smashing it, screaming, crying. Like in the ugly cry. And I said, that's not good enough. Phil said, put it in the water. And so she dunked it in the face of water that was on the table. Wow. This was the gateway to everything. This was the wrong people. It was drug dealers. It was it was a lot of the negative influences in her life were coming through the cell phone. I think that approach worked for me because it sounds silly, but it was the beginning of the process of surrendering. The end of the day, it was my decision. Meanwhile, she's a judge on X Factor. She's 19 years old, and she's in her first year of sobriety. What nobody knows is that while she was a judge, she's living in a sober apartment with roommates. She has having to do chores. She has no cell phone. She is completely and totally submitted to the process of recovery. You really have to lean into the people that are trying to support you, like my family. Like Mike and Phil, you know, you really have to surrender because that's when the change is going to happen. I haven't relapsed in drugs and alcohol. That's something that I'm very proud of. 
I'm coming up on five and a half years of sobriety. Demi had just broken up with Wilmer and she didn't have a lot of friendships. She didn't have a community. The first time before that was super tough. You yeah. had a girl crying. <laughs> the gym really helps. And I know that I would be in a very dark place without it. At the time, she loved kickboxing, and I was really hoping that she would fall in love with jiu-jitsu. Insist. It would give her some pride in having her own thing. It's empowering, and I watch her light up. It's a physical chess game. It makes her think. Anytime I'm able to take my mind off of any of my addictions, um, it's very beneficial to me. Because you're constantly thinking about what the next move is, the technique, the strategy. And also there's a reward system that takes many, many, many years to get through. Excellent. In jiu-jitsu, we start with a white belt. Every time you get a promotion, it's a stripe. We do four stripes on each belt, and then we move to the next belt. One goal that I haven't reached is a black belt. Being able to work towards that is something that I'm passionate about. I hope to God to see her into her 30s and to... put a black belt around her waist one day. Get a drink. Working out is a form of meditation to me because I'm not focused on anything in my head. It can transport you to a totally different place. I'm on a journey to discover what it's like to be free of all demons. I had taken my own life that it would hurt the people around me and I care too much about my family and my friends and I knew that I had a bigger purpose in life and I'm very very grateful that I'm still here today and that I didn't give in to urges and that I'm able to help people and be an example for them I would say hold on because the longer you go without acting on an urge the easier that it will be for you. And the more resilient, the more strong that you'll become. And you'll be able to show that light to so many people. Uh, my inner dialogue has changed so much. I want the help. Therefore, when I look in the mirror and I see something that I don't like, I change that thought instantly into an affirmation, a self-affirmation where I say, no, you're not going to think like that. You are beautiful. You're worthy of love and you're worthy of a happy and healthy life. And that kind of changes my energy and my mood. And sometimes I have to fake it till I make it. Sometimes I don't believe it, but I say it because I know that eventually I'll believe it. And it's kind of changed my life today. Don't hold it inside, don't isolate. Reach out to people, whether it's close friends, family. If you feel like you don't have anybody, look within yourself and try to find that resilience that will ultimately get you through whatever it is you're going through. Every single person on this planet is worth life.
Okay, so I just want to throw this in here real quick because I thought it was important. Uh, just check out the JW.org website and read this article called Help from the God of Comfort. It's a really great article. Um, it talks about, like, is God accessible to the depressed? How can the depressed get comfort from God? Also, it speaks about what if feelings of unworthiness makes us think that our prayers are not being heard? Or what if we are too distraught to put our feelings into words? Um, also, how does God answer our prayers? And it also puts in scriptures that we can read for comfort. Um, also gives examples of people back in the Bible times, um, how the Bible helped them then. And also current up to date um, examples of people who have struggles and how they mentioned the Bible's helped them. Then it goes into speaking about things about you know a time that's coming very soon um about where there will be no more depression there will be no more sickness no more death no more growing old no more aches and pains no more physical issues no more financial issues um you know nothing to cause us stress or pain or anything like that and that is something that is very wonderful to look forward to and it is very real so check out this article if you can i'm on jw.org or if you don't want to go to the website, that's fine. You can read this article as I'm scrolling through it. Just pause it to read it and then press play to continue so you can read it at your own pace. But yeah, check it out because I do think it will bring some type of peace as well as comfort. I'm going to love you more, more than you'll ever